Uh, this is Alan McCogliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner and an instructor in maritime industry policy. And this is not the gates of hell you're looking into right here. This is the fire that took place yesterday in the Gulf of Mexico, a fire eye off the KMZ oil platforms in the Gulf of Campeche. I hope I said that right. I had a lot of people send me some notes of how to pronounce it. So hopefully I said it right. Uh, this video, this is a... Uh, video that came out on it the fire has been extinguished it has been put out but what you're seeing here and this is a follow-up to the video i did yesterday is a release of natural gas coming out so a couple of indicators of why this is natural gas first off and why it's not oil uh, you don't have heavy smoke you have a complete combustion here uh, oil is usually incomplete combustion that's that black smoke all smoke is incomplete combustion the smoke that you do see there is probably just steam coming off uh, from the water boiling uh, this fire is just on the surface it's not underwater probably it's, it's completely up there on the surface uh, it's something ignited it from the gas release spark who knows what but it's concentrated in that area and as it dissipates out it gets dispersed uh, and that's the reason for the kind of circle you're seeing right there and why you're seeing that. But I want to go to a little bit more in depth about this because we found out a little bit more about this fire. And also, I had some questions regarding this compared to what happened in 2011 with another very notable incident in the Gulf of Mexico, and that was the Deepwater Horizon. So this is a story that came out yesterday. This is on G Captain. This is uh, talks about the uh, initial report here, along with some updates on there with some links uh, to the videos that were taken uh, about this. But one of the links here, and this is from uh, Pemex, which is basically the, the company that does uh, the um, uh, controls the oil fields here. This is Mexico's national oil field. They put this out. Pemex reported that a gas leak was recorded in an underwater pipeline with the presence of fire at sea 150 meters from the KU C satellite platform belonging to KMZ production asset. The fire was extinguished at 1045. This is the report that they put out. This has been translated uh, at 515 a.m. That was yesterday. A gas leak was registered in a 12 inch submarine pipeline in the presence of fire in the sea, 150 meters from the platform. Uh, goes into here. The incident was dealt with immediately when the security protocols were activated and with the appointment of nearby firefighting vessels such as Santa Cruz Island, Campeche Bay, and Bourbon Alley Nor. In addition, the interconnection valves in the pipeline were closed, extinguishing the fire and the gas release, ending the contingency around 1045 and restoring normal operating condi condi conditions. No injuries or evacuees are import, uh, reported. So why is this fire different from this fire? This is Deepwater Horizon. 2011. Uh, Deepwater Horizon was an offshore oil platform. It was a drill platform. Uh, Deepwater Horizon is a vessel. It is not anchored to the ocean floor. It actually floats around and actually moves around. And it has a, what's called a dynamic positioning system that allows it to remain perfectly stationary through the use of motors and thrusters and global positioning system and put drill, uh, drill into the sea floor to explore for oil. And that's what they were doing. They were doing explorations. And what they were attempting to do when the incident occurred with Deepwater Horizon was to seal up that oil head to basically close it down, detach from it and go off to another site. What happened was a blowout. Basically, when they attempted to seal it, the pressure was so much that it blew the blowout valve. And what you had was an escape of gas. Gas shot up the pipeline into the platform, it then turned the motors, uh, basically you had uh, liquefied gas, or excuse me, uh, you had uh, uh, vapors that all of a sudden caused motors to run out of control and you had a catastrophic explosion on the vessel. That's what you see right here, that catastrophic explosion on board the vessel with the vessel burning. But the worst problem was, is they never sealed the well. And as the vessel lost power, it lost its dynamic positioning system. It pulled on the wellhead and basically fractured the wellhead and started dumping pure crude oil into the ocean. And that was a result of the deep water horizon spill that we know of. This is a completely different situation here because this is a pipeline between production platforms and the shore. So this is a map of uh, Mexico and their oil and gas. And Campeche is right down here. Campuchia, I know I'm saying that wrong, I apologize, is right down here. These little uh, dots right here, these are all the platforms, and then you have these pipelines that connect them. I tried to find in Mexico a good map for this, and I really couldn't find one that did it. This is the map 
for from uh, what's called Bo, uh, BOEM. This is the bureau that basically oversees pipelines in the United States. Here is Texas-Mexico border, Houston, there's Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida right here. And all of these are pipelines on the ocean floor. You can see them right here. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. And you can see these pipelines right here. And all of this is charted and gridded. Uh, BOEM basically does charting for this and make sure that when they lay pipelines somewhere, they're not disturbing wrecks or, or the natural habitat. They do a whole series of elements here. But these pipelines crisscross the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. And what you can do with your oil platforms is actually pipe the oil right ashore. You don't have to load it on the tankers and shuttle it to shore. You can actually move it ashore. And this includes things like natural gas. And what happened, according to Pemex, is their 12-inch pipeline had a, a leak, a crack. We don't know what happened. Well, what we do know is that gas started to leak from it. And so natural gas started to leak to the surface, bubbles up, lighter than, lighter than air. It's going to float up there, and it's going to disperse. And all it needs is an ignition source. And with that ignition source, you get the fire that we see right there. You can see it right there. Not sure what caused it, what caused that fire to happen. The other thing you'll notice here in this video, I want to show you real quick. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it in, in some other images, which I don't have access to right here. But the heat off here, radiant heat is, is, is radiating out, uh, getting the platforms hot. There was an issue about why were vessels there spraying water. They're not going to put this fire out. Understand that. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to put that fire out. Plus, if you do put the fire out, that's actually very bad. Because what you're doing then is just letting the gas escape. And you could have then an explosion. Right now, this fire is burning off the gas. This is actually the best thing in the world that happened. It's burning off the gas. The way you extinguish this fire is what Pemex did is cut, shut the pipeline down and let what gas that's in the pipeline escape out of the system and basically burn itself off and extinguish it's clean combustion yeah you're boiling the water here you're getting it real hot and and, and they're fish and marine life that's going to die right there but they're also going to evacuate the area pretty quick what this is doing then is preventing the potential for a catastrophic explosion what the vessels were doing in this area and i believe i have that other video here too uh in it i think this is in this story right there here's that other video here that we were talking about here let's go ahead and put this up here this video right here is basically uh uh basically doing the same exact thing you'll see these vessels spraying water right here a couple of things number one they're not putting it out but this water provides a barrier between the heat and the vessels so you don't want the vessels getting hot so you're going to flow that water right there you also want to keep the fire from spreading containing a little bit more so you're keeping it but more importantly that platform they don't want that platform to get hit and probably what we're seeing because we don't have any other images besides this that these platforms can move, these vessels, these offshore supply vessels can move in here and provide protection to the platform so that you don't get heat, radiant heat, damaging the structure of the platform right there. Uh, probably people on that platform, you don't want them obviously to get injured. You don't want to bring a helicopter in to do it. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the fact that if you create these bubbles in the surface, it actually makes the vessel uh, or, or it changes the buoyancy of the water. So you can actually be, you have to be careful about getting close to this either because you're going to lose some buoyancy because of the air in the system. Again, I don't think these vessels are going in there specifically to fight the fire. They're providing a screen. You're, you're getting the radiant heat. I'm, I've been a firefighter for 20 years. And so one of the things we've done on structure fires before is put up a blanket of water to protect our apparatus and protect exposures. And basically what they're doing here is exposure protection. Uh, they want to stay close by in case they got to evacuate the platform. Uh, and they also probably want to maintain protection here until this fire can be extinguished and, you know, keep an eye on it and prevent other vessels from getting close to it. So you're going to see them there standing by. Uh, this platform is obviously crucial to Mexico. This is a story from Offshore Technology. I had this uh, link in uh, my story yesterday. Shows you the top 10 oil fields in Mexico by crude oil production. Mexico is a massive oil pro producer. It's, it's one of the top ones in the world. Uh, it's also one of the biggest ones we get oil from. And you'll see in there those key oil fields are in there. Uh, Maloop and Zop, those are two of those big uh, oil fields. And Ku, that's those three. That's what makes up the KMZ right there. <coughs> So you see them there. So these 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 last two color or the, or the second and third color right here, that's from it. And then also up here, this this kind of uh, darker uh, uh, kind of um, 
reddish color right there. So pretty substantial facility there for them uh, in use. Uh, and then this is a map here of the entire area here. So you'll see right here, this is the, the pipelines going off. There are connecting pipelines between them. And each of these are little oil fields uh, that were working. And all this then gets pumped ashore into refineries and for distribution into Mexico's pipeline system for movement around. And plus you have vessels come in to load at the oil terminals here to export Mexican crude oil. So obviously a, a important facility for Mexico. Fortunately, they were able to isolate this fairly quickly. Uh, burn again only for, it looked like around five hours is what they estimated in, in their report. Uh, that meant that they were able to shut that pipeline down. Obviously, the pipeline has been compromised, uh, will have to be replaced. One of the things that we tend to forget, even though this is a, a video series about shipping, we tend to forget that shipping also involves below the surface, laying submarine cables and pipelines like this. You know, when you use your cell phone and you call people around the world, most of that phone communication does, isn't wireless, believe it or not. Your cell phone is just connecting to the nearest cell phone tower. But then that wire communication is basically the way we did it back in the 1950s with cable and string. But now we do fiber optic cables, but many of those submarine cables are under the world's oceans going around the world. It's not by satellite. And same thing with many of these oil platforms. Again, come back to this map here off the coast of the United States. And here you see, again, that map and how intricate and how extensive our underwater pipeline system is off the coast. This is one of the reasons why when you see hurricanes come rolling into the Gulf of Mexico, all of a sudden pipelines shut down, everything shuts down because they don't want damage to any of these facilities. They don't want to be pumping ashore when all of a sudden you have a hurricane come in or they'll diminish their pumping ashore. To do it you can't always turn these things off like a spigot because there's pressure on them so you need to be able to flow it all the time but this is in no way compares to what we saw with Deepwater horizon Deepwater horizon was drilling specifically into the earth and what happened with that explosion is she lost her propulsion she basically yanked away from the drill head and that's what caused the rupture that led to the catastrophic loss of oil until they could put a new drill head on it and seal it shut this is sealed it's turned off it's natural gas it's not a uh, catastrophic pollutant by any ways it is amazing image to see but it is not uh, a massive uh, environmental issue now gas pipeline, this could be worse. This could have involved the facility. It could have been a massive explosion that took place and could have destroyed more pipelines. So it, 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 I don't want to minimize it either. But fortunately, this was taken care of. Hopefully what Mexico does is they do inspections of their pipelines and see where, other, where, where they may have potentially other issues and faults in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, our follow-up to the fire eye in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Go ahead, give it a thumbs up so that other people on YouTube will be able to find it. Go ahead and share it on whatever social media platform you use. And also hit the bell so that when new videos come out and when there's a disaster at sea, and they happen fairly frequently, unfortunately, you can get some analysis from me, a former merchant mariner, and a professor in maritime industry policy, security, and history. So this is Sal signing off. Have a good 4th of July weekend.